Welcome to the Smoke Introductory Hands-On Training. This session should last approximately an hour and will be a general overview of smoke. Before understanding what smoke is and what it can do for you, we need to understand the situation of post-production today. To meet the growing demand for high-quality finished content in post, many businesses have become reliant on disparate applications and complex workflows to get the job done. And this is before you count the added pressure of dealing with new file formats and format conversions that come along with using multiple applications to finish content. Businesses need to address this workflow complexity to maximize productivity and get the most out of their tools. What is needed is a fully integrated editorial finishing system that can be used from conceptualization, editorial, finishing, 3D graphics to final production. Smoke is designed to address these challenges. There are three takeaways I would like you to remember from this session. Autodesk Smoke comes to the market with a unique approach to finishing. All your creative tools in one unified interface designed for artists. Using a familiar NLE workflow, Smoke offers everything from basic editorial, conforming capabilities, timeline effects, paint, keying, motion graphics, color correction and advanced 3D compositing. You can even work with 3D models and geometry from Autodesk 3ds Max and Maya. Centralized project management within a dedicated media management environment removes the need to convert media between finishing tasks. All of this is achieved in Smoke where editorial and finishing tools are merged for a seamless workflow. Smoke works with your media in its native format, giving you a variety of options and parameters you can set for each. This cuts down on duplication of work, increases efficiency and improves collaboration even when you're working with an outside party such as XML or AAF importing. Autodesk has the reputation as a leader in 3D applications and Smoke is no exception. Smoke's compositing environment called Action includes 3D cameras, texturing, lighting and even the ability to alter surfaces in 3D space. All designed with GPU acceleration as well as pixel shading, we achieve a high quality output fast even when combining 2D images with 3D models in a true 3D space. Finally, before we start, Autodesk offers a list of online resources available for you to learn smoke. This includes a 30-day trial download of Smoke, news, tutorials, forums, blogs and even a YouTube channel for watching the training material on portable devices. All of this is available on the area, Autodesk's online user community. If you're a student, Autodesk also runs a student community resources program and you're able to download a free student version of Smoke for three years and experience Smoke firsthand. Let's get started. The material we are using is a corporate video that was commissioned by Thomson Airlines to highlight the upcoming introduction of the new 787 Dreamliner aircraft being introduced into their fleet. The post-production was carried out by Delicious Edit based in London. The offline was performed in Final Cut Pro and an XML was exported. This was then imported into Smoke and Smoke reconformed the spot using the original media files. Let's have a look at the final to set a context for what we're about to do. The material consists of CGI passes and live action footage. The footage consists of green screen shots as well as some stock footage. In Smoke, the spot required finishing which included keying, tracking, compositing, titling as well as last minute changes to update the editorial and effects portions. Let's start off in Smoke by examining the interface. As you can see I'm in the full screen player at the moment and if I press escape twice this will take me back to the main desktop. The actual desktop is divided into a few sections to the left of the interface we have what we call the Edit Desk Library window. This contains our folders and bins for media organization. The bins in Smoke are known as source areas but they perform the same function as what you might be used to in bins with other applications. 
The top part of the interface contains the contents of the source areas or bins and you can organize your media according to the task at hand. Finally, at the bottom of the interface is the record area or timeline area where most of the editing takes place. Now the interface will change depending on the task but this is the current interface which you'll be coming back to most of the time. Now before we start working on the material there are a few things that are definitely worth knowing. When creating a user you can tell Smoke to use the Final Cut Pro hotkey template which is included as part of the Smoke software. This means you don't have to relearn your favorite editing commands. Secondly, my preference is to use a pen and tablet but you could easily use a three button mouse to navigate the interface. Finally, you might want to note the light grey bars on the edge of the interface. These are known as the swipe bars and if you swipe them they will update the UI. Simply swipe back to return to the previous interface if you accidentally swipe them during the hands-on session. Now let's get started by setting the software into an editorial mode. To the left of the interface you will see there's a title that says Source Area Layout. It's currently set to Thumbnail which gives us the thumbnail view at the top of the interface. The blue button indicates a pop-up menu. If you click and hold down on this button the pop-up appears and you can choose the Source Record option at the bottom of the menu. This brings up the traditional Source Record editing mode. If we wanted to go ahead and start working with this particular menu it will work traditionally like you do in most nonlinear editors. Before we get started let's also have a look at a few timeline navigational basics. In the timeline you will see that this grey bar over here when you click to activate it is called the positioner. This shows us the current frame we are at in the timeline. You can click and scrub the timeline to view the data as we scrub through the program. You can also go ahead and navigate through the cuts in the edit by pressing the following hotkeys. If you use the shift and use the up and down arrows on the keyboard this will navigate all the edit points across all the layers in the timeline. In addition to this you will see that there are markers in the timeline which we will use to go to specific points to complete the tasks. To get to these markers you can hold the shift hotkey down on the keyboard and by pressing M this will then navigate to the marker. You can land on any marker you choose but if you keep pressing shift M it will simply cycle through all the markers in the timeline. I'm going to stop on the first marker in the timeline where we will start doing some editorial tasks. To zoom into the timeline we will look at the pan bar at the bottom of the timeline. You can see that the positioner in the timeline is also indicated in the pan bar. To zoom into the timeline simply click on the pan bar and drag upwards. The upward motion will zoom into the timeline and a downward motion will zoom out. Once we've zoomed into the timeline we can then just use this pan bar just to align the view so we can work in the correct point of the timeline. If at any point we want to zoom the timeline to fit the screen we can go to the bottom right of the interface and click the home button. If we wish to return back to the previous zoom factor we can click the home button once more and this will cycle the behavior back to the original zoomed position. So this is very useful for being able to jump in and out of the timeline in order to view the context. Now let's move on to the editorial tasks. To see the length of this gap inside the timeline you can simply select it and it will tell us that it has a duration of 7 seconds. The second thing is if we look to the left of the timeline the patching is indicating that it's going to edit the video onto layer 3. In order to start performing the edit Let's go over to the Edit Desk window on the left of the interface. If we look down, the third one from the top is the Basic Editing bin. To expand the clips in the bin, simply click the triangle located next to the word Basic. This will reveal two clips, Boat and Shoreline. Whichever clip you select will be loaded into the Source Viewer straight away. So let's start off with the Boat clip. The source viewer allows us to scrub the material as well as play the material if necessary. It is also used to mark the clips up which will then be edited into the timeline. 
So if I go back to the beginning of the clip and use the arrow keys to move a few frames forward, we can then go ahead and use the in button to mark an endpoint. Now because this is 7 seconds long, I would like one shot to be 3 seconds and the other shot to be 4 seconds. So we've marked our endpoint and I would like this material to have an exact duration of 3 seconds. You can see under the play controls you have endpoint, outpoint and you also have got the duration setting. If you click on the time code next to the right of duration, we can enter in a value of 300 for 3 seconds and if you press return, this will set the duration of the in and out points to 3 seconds. To edit this 3 second shot into the timeline, you will see that between the source and record view, we have the editing operations. By pressing overwrite, this will then edit the clip into the timeline. Once the clip is inside, we can then grab the positioner and we can scrub through this clip to see how it's positioned in the edit. Now if you wanted to navigate to this cut point, remember we can use the up or down arrow hotkeys to navigate the edit. In this case, press the down arrow and this will take us to the cut point. In the edit desk window, let's go ahead and select the shoreline clip. Like before, we will go to the source viewer and use the arrow keys to navigate a few frames forward and we'll now place an endpoint into the clip. In the timeline, we now have got a 4 second gap remaining. So what we're going to do, once again, is choose under the duration value, set the time code to be 4 seconds long. Once more, hit return and this will set a duration of 4 seconds to this clip. Remember as before, your editing commands are between the source and record viewer, we press overwrite and this then edits it into the timeline. Now that we've got two shots in the timeline, let's go ahead and put a dissolve between the two shots. In order to do this, just press the up arrow and this will navigate to the cut point between the boat and the shoreline clip. What we need to ensure is that nothing is selected in the timeline. You can ensure this simply by clicking on the grey area beneath the edit. Once this has been done, you will see that to the left of the interface, we have now got the transition controls. This includes cut, dissolve, wipe, custom and axis. If you simply click on the dissolve button, this will then add a dissolve into the timeline. The duration of this dissolve is defaulted to 10 frames. This is indicated by the display over here. This can easily be changed in the preferences menu if you choose. Now if you wanted to make this dissolve longer, we can simply click and drag to the left or to the right of this timecode value and it will increase the duration of the dissolve. To review the shot, we'll simply click and drag the positioner to the beginning of the boat clip and then we can press play which will then begin to play the two shots with the dissolve in the timeline. You can press the space bar or the play button to stop the playback. So this is how we would perform the edit in the timeline. Now in case you're wondering, Smoke does support 1.2.3. as well as 4. Point editing for fit to fill with time warping. There is also a set of trimming tools inside the timeline which allows you to trim your heads, tails as well as slip and slide your edit with inside of Smoke. Ultimately, you have a full editorial toolset at your disposal.